Number 8. The dopamine hit of escape. You're staring at that report that's due tomorrow. The cursor blinks mockingly at you from a blank document. Your brain knows exactly what needs to happen, but instead of diving in, you find yourself opening a new tab. Maybe just a quick scroll through social media. Just five minutes to clear your head. That tiny wave of relief you feel when you click away? That's pure dopamine. You just got rewarded for escaping from the very thing you should be doing. It's like getting a high five for running away from your responsibilities. Your reward system doesn't care about deadlines or consequences. It only cares about right now. And right now, escape feels fantastic. Your reward system is simply following its original programming, which prioritized immediate safety and comfort above all else. Every time you dodge a stressful task, you get a small chemical celebration. The problem is, your nervous system can't tell the difference between avoiding a saber-toothed tiger and avoiding a PowerPoint presentation. Both trigger the same relief response. The stickiness of procrastination makes perfect sense when you realize it's literally addictive. Each avoidance creates a tiny hit of pleasure, and part of you starts craving that escape. This response is hardwired into human psychology, a leftover from when avoiding danger could literally mean the difference between life and death. Number 7. The Adrenaline Rush Some people work best under pressure, and there's a neurochemical reason why. When that deadline starts breathing down your neck, your chemical reward system is activated, creating an intoxicating rush of neurotransmitters. Adrenaline floods your system, dopamine spikes, and suddenly you feel more alive than you have all week. Just like that, you're in beast mode. Blood pumping, focus locked. The same chemicals that would help you outrun a predator are now helping you bang out a presentation at 2 a.m. Your focus sharpens, time seems to slow down, and ideas start flowing faster than you can type them. For some, this rush becomes the preferred operating mode. Normal, low-pressure work feels sluggish and boring compared to the electric intensity of last-minute panic. You're actually creating the precise neurochemical conditions where your mind performs at its peak. The danger is that this becomes your only gear. You start to think pressure is the only fuel that works, so you create that pressure by waiting until the last possible moment. You become addicted to your own stress response, chasing that high-stakes feeling because it's the only time your mind feels fully switched on. Number 6. Creative Incubation While you're busy feeling guilty about not starting that project, your subconscious is actually hard at work. Procrastination often doubles as a hidden brainstorming session. Your mind keeps turning the problem over in the background, making connections and testing solutions without you even realizing it. This is why the perfect opening line often hits you in the shower, or why the solution to a complex problem suddenly appears while you're making coffee. You've basically outsourced the thinking to your subconscious mind. Genius move when you think about it. Psychologists call this incubation, and it's a crucial part of the creative process. Sometimes the best thing you can do for a project is to not think about it directly. Your unconscious mind is incredibly good at pattern recognition and making unexpected connections, but it needs space to work its magic. The key is recognizing the difference between productive procrastination and pure avoidance. If you're genuinely stuck on a creative problem, stepping away can be a brilliant strategy. But if you're just scared to start, that's a different beast entirely. The brain loves procrastination because sometimes stepping back is exactly what helps you move forward. Number five. Protection from threat mode. Your amygdala, the brain's alarm system, can't tell the difference between a charging rhino and a challenging assignment. Both register as potential threats that need to be avoided. When you look at that big, uncertain task sitting on your to-do list, your threat detection system starts flashing warning lights. Suddenly, writing a simple email feels as dangerous as walking into a dark alley. Your fight-or-flight response kicks in, and since you can't exactly punch your laptop, flight becomes the obvious choice. Procrastination is your brain's way of keeping you safe from imagined danger. This response is especially strong when the task involves potential judgment or failure. Your brain treats the possibility of criticism like a physical threat. It would rather keep you safe in the land of what if than risk the pain of actual feedback. Delay can become a form of emotional armor. The irony is that avoiding the task often creates more real danger than facing it would have. But your threat detection system doesn't think that far ahead. It's focused on immediate survival. And right now, that means staying as far away from the scary thing as possible. It spotted a threat, you avoided it, and now you're safe. Mission accomplished. At least until tomorrow. Number 4. Perfectionism Safety Net If you never start, you can never fail. If you never finish, no one can judge the final result. Procrastination becomes a clever way to protect your self-worth 
from the harsh reality of imperfection. As long as the project exists only in your head, it can remain flawless. This is perfectionism wearing a procrastination disguise. It's easier to dream of brilliance than risk being average. The unfinished masterpiece in your imagination will always be better than the flawed reality you might actually create. The cruel twist is that this protection comes at the cost of ever actually achieving anything. You stay safe from criticism, but you also stay safe from success, growth, and the satisfaction of completion. Your perfectionist brain thinks it's being helpful, but it's actually holding you hostage. This pattern often develops early, especially in people who are praised for being naturally talented. If your identity is built around effortless excellence, then struggling with something feels like a threat to who you are. Procrastination lets you maintain the illusion that you could do it perfectly if you just had more time. Number three, control and autonomy. Sometimes procrastination is less about the task and more about who's asking you to do it. When someone else sets your deadline, your brain can rebel by asserting its own timeline. Delay becomes a quiet form of resistance, a way of saying, I'll do this when I decide to do it. This is especially common with tasks that feel imposed rather than chosen. You're wired to crave autonomy, and when that freedom feels threatened, procrastination becomes an act of psychological rebellion. The underlying issue is about preserving your sense of choice and independence more than completing the task itself. Even when the deadline is self-imposed, this dynamic can still kick in. Part of your brain wants to prove that you're in charge of your own schedule, even if that means making things harder for yourself. It's like having an internal teenager who refuses to clean their room just because someone told them to. The strange comfort of procrastination often comes from this sense of choice. Even if you're making your life more difficult, at least you're the one making that choice. Putting things off feels like taking your power back, even if it's really just building your own cage. Number two, energy conservation. The brain burns through about 20% of your daily energy, despite being only 2% of your body weight. It's like having a tiny supercomputer that's constantly draining your battery. From an evolutionary perspective, avoiding unnecessary mental effort was actually a smart survival strategy. When your ancestors faced a choice between hunting for food and solving abstract problems, the brain that chose hunting was more likely to survive. Mental energy was precious, and wasting it on non-essential tasks could literally be fatal. This evolutionary wiring still runs deep in your neural circuitry today. Procrastination flips on your mental energy saver. Why burn calories on difficult thinking when you could coast on autopilot instead? Complex tasks feel like expensive apps draining your system, so the mind just swipes them closed. This conservation instinct made perfect sense when mental energy was scarce and physical survival was the priority. But in today's world, where thinking is survival, this ancient wisdom becomes a modern problem. Your brain loves procrastination because it feels like smart resource management, even when the resources it's trying to save are exactly what you need to use. Number one, novelty craving. Human brains are wired to seek out new, unpredictable experiences. Novel stimuli trigger dopamine release, which feels good and helps you learn. This made sense when survival depended on noticing changes in your environment. The brain that got excited about new things was more likely to spot opportunities and threats. But tax forms aren't novel. Neither are reports, emails, or most of the tasks that fill your day. Your brain looks at these repetitive, predictable activities and basically yawns. Meanwhile, that notification on your phone promises something new, something different, and something that might actually be interesting. Social media platforms have weaponized this novelty craving. Every scroll offers the possibility of discovering something surprising. Your brain gets a tiny hit of excitement with each new post, each unexpected video, and each random piece of new information. It's like a slot machine designed specifically for your attention. The mundane task you're avoiding can't compete with this constant stream of micro-novelties. Why answer emails when you could be three Wikipedia pages deep on why octopuses dream? Procrastination feels like exploration, like keeping your options open, like staying alert in case something fascinating shows up. Understanding why you procrastinate doesn't instantly fix it, but it does shift something. You stop blaming yourself and start getting curious. And once you can name the pattern, you're no longer stuck inside it. That's when things can really start to change. We explain a lot around here. Subscribe so you don't miss what's coming next.